Welcome Hello to- and welcome to Second Take, <laughs> the podcast where we give movies a second look, second chance, a second take, if you will. I am your host, Preston Jenkinson, and you already heard my co-host, Jake Twido. This is me, Preston Jenkinson, as well. Hello, guys. I am the host. <laughs> no. Yeah, boy. Harry Potter, this is getting real good. Oh, yeah. The, the Deathly Hallows Part 1. God. Hey, I love... Mm, ma'am. Good. The, the first instance where the studio went for the cash grab and split the last book into two. I hate that they started this whole trend here. I'm thankful. I know they could have made a, just a long movie. This bull crap. Yeah, this, no. that you could have cut a lot of stuff out and made this a three yeah. hour movie. But you know, um, Preston between our last visit, I was in Atlanta. I went to the Harry Potter experience. Mm hmm. Cause I need something to do. I did slam fireballs like crazy and walked in and was astonished. They had so <laughs> many awesome. Uh, do not do this. If you're listening to this and you're in Atlanta, do not pay for this. No, but so many movie props and I loved we're doing this this week and I got to see, I'll have to send you a lot more pictures. Yeah. Uh, if you want to post it anywhere, but like, dude, it's pretty wild to see like, uh, the three of them, I, I not to hop too far forward. Whenever they change clothes because they're on the run, like their actual outfits, there it is. Oh wow! The actual the actual Elder Wand, there it is. It was cool. It's like, like the, whoa, the movie prop. Yeah, the legit. Like that was it. That was the one. So it's pretty cool. Nice. Not worth the money. <laughs> not worth the money not worth the money just but, look at props hey I'm expensing this to the podcast mm, we don't have that so uh, uh, well, story- well, I'm going to tell you a like, overview of this bullcrap because I will the, oh, the story so of <laughs> Deathly Hallows Part 1 as Harry, Ron, and Hermione race against time and evil to destroy the Horcruxes they uncover the existence of the three most powerful objects in the wizarding world, the Deathly Hallows. I, uh, cool. Negative review for me. Okay. It takes seven eighths of the movie to introduce that. It does. It takes a while to get to that. Like for that to be the title, it takes forever to get there. Yeah. Which I feel but, like they should that that whole animated sequence. I feel like they could have put that at the beginning. Like thank just you. Somebody telling that story, and then it's my notes exactly. That animated sequence was a beauty. That's one of the coolest amazing. things I've. Every time I watch this movie, ah, uh, yeah, perfection. But a uh, positive review hit me. It's our friend Lisa Schwarzbaum again from Entertainment Weekly. Oh, uh, bomb it up, girl. She says, Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 1 also bravely faces the future, slipping with expert ease among the thrilling mass of complications and complicated set pieces that Rowling throws fans in the final sprint. Then guided the faithful to the fate that awaits everyone in this world, the moment called the end. Okay, that's the most bullcrap review I've ever heard yeah. in my life. I'm going to throw words on here and poop on your back. Yeah, but I, I sounds like she liked it, but I mean, she's not wrong. It felt like this was like Harry Potter's version of Infinity War. If you Yeah, know. but she probably also put some mayonnaise on a French toast. Probably. <laughs> um, Amy. <laughs> what did I just say? I don't know. Amy Benacali from the San Francisco Chronicle with our negative review says this one is a long archetypal journey that screeches to a halt a few steps short of its destination. Mm. Yeah, you know, this doesn't end great. No, not really. No, this is the this is the worst. I don't know. You could have a good tie in. Yeah. I, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up, man. I'm gonna drop it. I'm gonna drop something here. Drop it. Dune sucked. Whoa. Actually, I loved it. The ending sucked. 
It did, but I mean they 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 prepared you for that at the very beginning of the movie with Dune Part One. Yeah, suck my butt. No way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to make sure I brought that up. But no, I get that. A like prequel series on HBO. Ah, uh, HBO, whatever it's going to be called next week. Yeah, I think it's like Max or something like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, what an experiment. Uh, I think it's important, like, you've already said it. This is the first book adaption movie where they split it in two. Mm -hmm. Where you've already done the Hobbit film series. Does not benefit. No, I think they made this before the Hobbit movies. No, no, they did. You covered, sorry, you covered the Hobbit in this No, we haven't. You just did Lord of the Rings, that was it? Just did Lord of the Rings. Oh my gosh, apologies. Man, I'm I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible. But hey, that no, fine. The Hobbit, let's look at the Harry Potter series did. We're gonna extend one book to this movie's. Look at the Hobbit series. Yeah. What the hell did you do? Like, this is what happened because of this cash grab. So mm-hmm. it's terrible. Yeah. Doesn't matter how good this is, there's a negativeness. To me, at least. Yeah, I mean that happens. happens anytime when you split up a book, a, a, mo- a split up a book into several movies. There's going to be yeah. disappointing ending in the first one. Yeah, but this movie starts off again, kind of like we talked the the last time of you know Severus Snape means something now. Mm-hmm. You know he's actually got stuff. So, uh, is it at is at the Malfoy house right where they have the whole well, we immediately start with the um, the new Minister for Magic, Bill Knight. Oh, God. Yeah. And you think, oh, okay, this dude's evil. <laughs> that guy is a sick actor, by the mm-hmm. way. He's really good. And yeah. for those that don't know, Bill Knight, he played um, Davy Jones in Pirates of the Caribbean. Wait. Say that again. He was. Bill, the, he was. Was he Davy Jones? Yeah. You can tell by the voice. Yep. Sure can. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, for anyways, those of you that I knew that all along. No, 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 no. Listening. No, no, Jake no, no, had no. this look on his face of just no, great realization. No, 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 no. no. Pre- uh, for those listening, Preston's wrong. No, 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 no. Well, there's video evidence, so and that's going up. That's that is can. okay. That's crazy. Yeah, that. Good. I mean, yeah, great, great actor. You're right. It does start with him. God, my brain hurts. I'm sorry. But really, the story picks up when Snape walks into the Malfoy Manor, and every all the Death Eaters and Voldemort are seated around the Malfoy's house dinner table place thing. Yeah, and you get the nice exposition, which I think Alex ever mentioned, but the uh, Voldemort needs a new wand. Mm -hmm. Like that's all of a sudden you find out. The cores can't match. They're both Phoenix feather cores. Right. Um, which, you know, hilarious that Elevander. Is that yes. right? Yeah, that's the one he gives them. Call it out in the first movie. Good accident, J.K. Rowling. Good job. Good job. You made an accident that translates, but um What was the accident? I think she accidentally made the like references of this is the same wand Voldemort uses. Well, it's got the same core. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's intentional. I think it was a throwaway thing. You think so? Yeah, that lady's a homeless crack addict. Yeah. I think she thought enough about this stuff that she. You do enough crack cocaine, you know it's up. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I should be positive. But yeah, no, no. But it's great. Like, you finally get that fully explained, the understandment. It's so funny. That whole Lucius Malfoy giving him the wand yeah. snaps off his decorative end, like snaps it off you, cane Lucius. Because <laughs> yes. the wand slides into a cane. Ah, but you get straight into this, like. Do you like post apocalyptic stuff? 
Uh, it depends on what it is. Yeah, I, same. I, overall, I kind of like... It's interesting. This movie becomes post-apocalyptic real fast, though. Oh, oh yeah. Hermione wipes her parents' memories of her. And that is done so quick and not fully... I mean, it's like she did it. F you, we're gone. Mm -hmm. That is the most depressing thing of this movie, man. That's that's the first thing that I have written down is like it's a completely oh my different tone to everything else that's come before. I I mean, good good for them. I know how the books go; it gets maturity as it goes. The books, the movies do too, but Mm -hmm. that's dark, man. Like yeah, I've said this from the beginning. Like this this series has done well in growing up with its audience. Yeah. I, you know what, as a kid, well, that's weird. As a book reader, Mm -hmm. I always went, nah, the movies aren't going to do that. No, they do. Mm -hmm. Definitely do. Less cartoonish. Yeah. It's not as happy. I mean, the, 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 these are all miserable. None of this is good from now on out. Like, but, at this table, they're discussing when Harry Potter is to be moved and where he's going. And who was it that told who, who was it that told the Death Eaters that he was being moved that night? Um, I don't remember his daggum name. Was it's it that, that thief guy. guy with the yeah, ball? Yeah, yeah. thief guy, ball boy. Oh crap! Right. Hmm. Let's call him. Um... I can't remember his name. I just know that mm. they call him a thief. Yeah. Because he's yeah, with he them at the Godric Hollow or whatever. Which, red flags. W- again, I'm going to... Seriously, last time I tried this, not book the movie. Reading the book. They're like, this guy's here. He owns a pawn shop. Yeah, he's going to sell you out. What are you, stupid? Yeah. <laughs> so for the movie, like... <laughs> Yeah, they they present him as an unreliable source. Like, what? What is this yeah, crap? Because he Which owes really that sucks. a favor, I think. Yeah, it's garbage. This whole thing, like, they need to transport Harry. Preston. People that Preston, are dedicated to the cause, seems like. Gonna move Harry. Why can't they just port key him? Or whatever the transportation, they do the whole thing. This or is bull Emory, crap. Like they do the rest of the Actually, movie. Yes, sorry, couldn't remember it. (laughs) What? Why? Whatever. So they do it. They all clone to Harry, which is cool. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Took 97 takes. Well, I think they do kind of explain that there's kind of a trace on apparating. Maybe. Okay. Uh, No, you're right. Uh, Yeah. Because I think they can crack that. No, no, no. I'm going to stay negative. No, F this. They're wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Because what they... they, uh, in the book, it's explained that anyone like Voldemort's name has a trace on it. That does have a trace on it. And this movie should have done it in the movies, by the way. Well, they Shame do. On them. Like they show you instead of tell you because anytime once. They, only once. No, when they yeah. when they're in that cafe after they left that wedding, they say Voldemort Death Eaters show up. They're at the dude's house. Death Eaters show up. Um, you're right in this movie. In this movie alone. Yes. Third instance when they're in the woods, there's yeah. Death Eaters outside. Yeah, you're right. Bubble. You're right. But just in this one, that's supposed to be book series long. Really? Yeah, it's supposed to be. Okay. But I mean, it only it matters. And it, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm, it doesn't being matter criti- I'm being I, really critical for nothing. I felt like that was very well done. Like, they and the, showed yeah. you instead of told you. Especially at... um. Well, I was really confident when I was talking about Preston, and now I'm not so confident. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, there's a moment later. It'll come back to me. But that whole sequence, I, I'm just going to tell you the truth. I cry. I cry every time. I love birds. Oh, and head I'm a weirdo. God, I love birds of prey specifically. Yeah. Like when my whole younger career, what I wanted to do was just. I don't remember the right word, but study birds of prey. I want to be a ornithologist. Thank you. Close this sucker out, son. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I just wanted to be a falconer and that's it. And then I said, 
well, I'll never live off money for that. So then I got into IT. <laughs> and uh, for those not watching this right now, then I worked 60 hours a week this week for some bullcrap customers. Don't ever do this. Anyways. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Birds of prey. I, yeah. I, yeah. That that killed me. Just because I cry just, every time. I don't care. It's fine. Hedwig's the one to give him away because Hedwig gave him away to save him. And she's is it he or she? I can't remember. I think Hedwig's a girl. Okay, she sacrifices herself. Owls on that penises. Who cares? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> they might. I don't actually know. They might be like ducks and have like that corkscrew thing. Oh yeah, they rape. Um, oh God! All dude, right, this is. Um, but it gets so dark. Like, yeah. freaking Bill. No, not Bill. Sorry, one of the Weasley brothers' ears gets blown off. Yeah. Mad Eye just dies. Like you don't get to experience a real Mad Eye. Why didn't they kill him on screen, dude? I guess it's wow. timing and payment. I don't know. I guess Brendan Gleeson was like, "No, I'm fucking done." Like, <laughs> yeah. Here's my son. <laughs> oh. Um. I don't uh, like between that. There's a wedding that's gonna happen. Mm, like it, it sucks. That, that I mean, like I don't know. This movie's really good. You hate it. You hate watching these moments because of these characters you love, you root for them, and you're mad. But it's so good. Like they do these, such a good job of like it's brief it's moments of joy. Sad. Yeah. In what is mostly a very bleak movie. Um, yeah. but I love they're like, F this, we're really sad. I mean, like, I meant sincerely, not sarcastically. F this. This was really bad. Life is really bad. Life is really sad. We're having a wedding. Mm -hmm. And you get this actor that I'm blanking on. It's Bill Weasley. Um that's Domino Gleason. Is that him? Brendan Gleason's son, which played Meta. Oh, hold, wait, wait, wait. This is about to get really elongated. That's his son? Yep. Uh, all right, well. <sighs> Close this podcast out. I did not. You said that earlier, and I went, oh, yeah, yeah. got it. Jake learned something else today, everybody. That guy's such a good actor, by the way. He is. Other than General Hux, he was good. He oh, was I don't. Good. Yeah, we don't. We, I don't talk about that. No. Ex Machina, he's great in that. That's awesome. I. I'm sorry. It. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> uh, sorry. I'm just. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so he's gonna get married. That's cool. <laughs> but like I don't know again like kind of I think I brought this up some we get it a little bit more later but like real life like life outside of Hogwarts mm -hmm. this movie does the job of hey this is the wizarding world here's a wedding we're gonna make this you know you understand how this goes but that thing gets effed because the new miniature magic arrives and wants to give yeah. crap out to uh, the trio yeah, because we've we they they after because before this the the minister for magic that was before the one that Voldemort put in power gives um Harry, Ron, and Hermione stuff from Dumbledore. Um he gives Harry the snitch that he caught in his first match of Quidditch. Yep, in his butt. <laughs> gives Ron the illuminator. And I, he tries to give away the um, sword of Gryffindor, but he can't do that. Yeah, it's gone. It's not his to yeah. give. Somewhere else. Um, and then so between that and the wedding, that guy's dead, I assume. Bill Nighy. Yeah. And then this new minister for magic says, Harry Potter's our number one person and everyone's getting reviewed to be... Um, yeah. Wizard witches or wizards. Um, and then you got questionable blood. We're effing you over. Get mm -hmm. out of my country. And then 
some Death Eaters destroy the wedding. Hermione, Ron, and Harry apparate to London. That dang scene of them mm-hmm. fighting in that shop. To me, that's probably the best scene of the whole movie series, period. It's like a shootout. I, yeah, it is awesome. Mm-hmm. I, done with perfection. Uh, it was so good. Just perfect. But you leave there straight to... Uh, don't they figure out... Yeah, no, they do figure out that Sirius's brother could be the one that stole the locket. So from the last movie, yeah. they find a locket that's a Horcrux, and it's clearly this is a fake R.A.B. Mm-hmm. Whatever. It's uh, Salazar uh, Slytherin's locket. That's the whole deal. Yes. And, uh, you know, Harry's got the connection because of Sirius Black with Creature. Creature. I can't creature on my big note. I can't even do that voice. Um, Creature tells him someone raided the house, and you figure out it's the same turd that sold them out. Yeah. <laughs> previously. So, <Cool. laughs> yeah. Yeah, they send so Creature they after that guy. Yeah. <laughs> he evaporates him to the house. I'm like, man, this is where I'm like, look, I know y'all are trying to be good people. Just kill people, kill them. Yeah, dude. Have them kill like, them. You can kill people. No one's going to yeah. argue with killing a Death Eater. Yes, you can do it. Kill him. They um, were trying to kill you. Self defense. <laughs> Yeah, it works. Yeah, but uh, but when creature love, comes no, back, uh, said thief, we get Dobby, Dobby return, Madungus, Madungus. That's the guy. Is Madungus? That's right. Okay. Yeah. What a great name. That sorry, it just came up because I was thinking about taking a dump. <laughs> um, Madungus. <laughs> but he sold it to Umbridge. Yes, she took. Well, she took Which, it. From her. No, he, he she he sold it to her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which uh, I saw her actual pink suit. Oh, wow, fun. A small child asked his dad if he could piss on it. <laughs> they were really I wish. into Harry Potter. They were very. <laughs> I wanted to GoPro the whole thing and release it to. Oh my gosh. I imagine it, it'd have to be like some super fans that went to something like that. Oh, they were dressed up, man. They had robes. Oh, Nerds. Um, yeah, I said that a couple times. Um, anyway, didn't get kicked out. So they got to go get this jazz from inside the ministry, which mm-hmm. I thought this was two movies ago. Nope, this movie. No, it's this movie. <laughs> they go knock up, uh, knock up, knock out three random geezers and Polly just potion them. Yep. Um, which I do love that now they can do this with ease. You know, we talked about poly just potions and other stuff previously. It took a while. Yeah. They know what they're doing. It's great. Well, now it's like, oh yeah, there's growth. Good. We're, we're kind of getting all the greatest hits in this too. I mean, we've got yeah. Umbridge and then we've got, you know, Harry's unis- using Expecto Patrono like it's nothing, you know, just like boom. And yeah. Yeah, they sneak in. Yeah, they sneak in like you just said. Like it, it's kind of it's funny. I mean, they're all there. They're all having to do like their jobs that they're supposed to be. They figure out where Umbridge is. Of course, everything lines up. You get that sick Patronum where, yeah, there are so many Death Eaters. I mean, it's nothing. It's you know, twenty, thirty Death Eaters. No, I'm sorry, um, Dementors. Not Death Eaters. Dementor. Dementors. Hey, Preston, what's the uh, worst part about prison, do you know? Huh. It's the Dementis. The Dementis. Hey, no Harry Potter. Um, There's the office. Thank you. I kidnapped the president's daughter. (laughs) And I got away with it. (laughs) They never caught me. (laughs) Never caught me in prison, Mike. (laughs) Um, Prison Mike. Um... You get the nice, like, this is where, to me, this is where the movie really starts. You got a lot of exposition. It's great. It's really moving the story. The polyjuice is wearing off. They got the locket. They're getting out. Everyone's after them. Well, they dissipate to the forest. Ron gets hurt. Ron gets um, scissor-sized or whatever. 
He got cut. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, his his butt gets cut, <laughs> man. Um. Also, the whole movie series, like Magic, is great. This one, mm-hmm. it, Magic, is crazy good. Mm-hmm. That was the worst comment, but like uh, her unending pouch. Yeah, the the like that's the most believable. Like, oh, this is great. She's probably but, uh, just, your hand is probably just going to like some storage room that she has connected to that thing somewhere. Who knows? So cool, so yeah. cool, so usable. Um, so they understand, like, yeah, they've really got to go take care of these Horcruxes. They don't know how to do it. You get the uh, terrible locket share, which. Not a lot of story happens, mm-hmm. but and I guess it does. Movie progress, or just, I don't know. This is probably one of my favorite things of like this locket's killing them. Yeah. They're all killing each other, you know. <coughs> it is wild, man. And uh, so when you wear the locket, it makes you insane. Yeah. P- which, apparently it turns you into a, a, a prick. Yeah. Makes you Dumbledore after he drank that water. <laughs> um, which poor Ron, like, I don't know. He's the most susceptible. He's not the the most. He, ah, he's great. He's he is such a good good character. But yeah, yeah, he gets toasted out of it. He gets jelly. Yeah, he gets out of there. He gets out of there. I mean, like that whole thing is so weird. Just. <laughs> I remember reading it in the book. To, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to do the book stuff, but like, I mean, you you have to. It it is what it is. Um, he leaves. It is so frighteningly how okay it is with just Hermione and Harry. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Things are good because he's you, you get know, the world's worst about- worst death sequence, but. Yeah, he's worried about his family. That's his big thing. And tells Harry that you ain't got no family. Yeah, that. I'm like, damn, son. Yeah. He's better he's better be underneath a spell. Why did I have an accent with that? Um, I don't know. I don't know what that accent was either. I've I've been watching a lot of this guy on YouTube called Stale Cracker. Uh-huh. He's from the Bayou, dude. From the Bayou. He's a cooking guy. And it's like, it's sarcasm. Like, he's a cop. He's, I don't know. That doesn't mean anything. But he is from New Orleans. Uh-huh. Like, he cooks New Orleans food. And he's always like, put a cracker on it, do, do the whole thing. So it's just stuck in my head. I'm racist <laughs> somehow. Um, I don't, you know, it's the most boring parts of these, all, all the movies is this, is Hermione and Harry. Yeah. It might be my favorite parts. I think it's like good character stuff, you know? Like good good character stuff and the cinematography becomes amazing. Oh, like the the different landscapes oh, and everything is like wow. wow. Gosh, yeah. I yeah. So freaking good, but they're having to bounce around. They're doing um charms to mm-hmm. hide themselves which is important because they're moving around a lot, but then you get where Hermione sees the Snatchers, and the Snatchers are people helping the Death Eaters and Voldemort grab bad wizards or mudbloods or dookie bombers, whatever they don't like. I don't know. Um, Yeah. So that happens. Like You get the nice like, Christmas scene where he dances with Hermione, which is so awkward. Well, but I mean, also so good. I mean, like it's so good. There are two people in a very lonely moment, and just you know, for half a second, they think about, "Hey, let's stay with each other in the woods and tap that right." You know, know Sam for for our dicks. I think Hermione's eighteen, Preston. We can finally make comments. I think the, the actress was well over eighteen <laughs> at this point. So, <laughs> <Sorry>. this movie. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, okay. Well, this is a good last podcast. Um, <laughs> they yeah. end up in what's what's the name of that village they end up at? Um, Godric's Hollow. Godric's Hollow, and they How visit. Did I pull that out of my butt, man. I don't know. You that was just like boom off the dome. 
uh, they visit Harry's parents grave um, and it has the Deathly Hallows symbol on it no no uh, there's one in there that does oh I thought it Hermione, was there yeah Hermione finds it which is uh, Grindelwald's ancestors okay it's Grindelwald I think it's Grindelwald's grave maybe even dude that I'm not a super stupid emotional person I've also been very very tired so I'm gonna blame it on that that whole like Harry seen his parents gravestone for the first time that got mm-hmm. me too which I don't know. I'm shocked he's never been there I don't think he's ever had the opportunity Somebody could have took him there at some point, I feel like. <laughs> Deadly? <laughs> like Dumbledore or yeah, Hagrid or... Well, you kind of find out why. It's a trap. Like, yeah. I don't know how long the trap's been there. Um, But that is the most frightening sequence. The jump scare of the oh, basilic. The, with the snake. Ugh. Oh, God, dude. When they, as soon as that lady comes on the screen and you hear the daggum flies flying around her, it always just like the hair on my neck goes. Oh, yeah, like there's that. a scene where Hermione goes into a back room and you hear flies flying around. I was like, why do you keep going? <laughs> she don't shower, bro. Um, <laughs> and then Harry starts talking to her in uh, what do you call that? Um, parcel, parcel tongue. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which when you're talking to her in parcel tongue, dude, you know there's a red flag. What are you doing? Kill her. Shoot you her. know there's only a few people that can do that, and the majority of them are snakes. <laughs> that bitch is a snake, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so dumb. Like, and it's do like, it. For this, because uh, this is technically a PG movie. And Bethilda the, Bagshot. Bagshot? It's Bethilda. Was she that old lady at the yeah. wedding that was talking to him? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Bethilda that is the, that laddie. Telling rumors about Dumbledore or whatever? Yeah, she's a she's a historian. Okay. She's she been got, best got friends. Oh, yeah. Gobbled it up. So the snake can turn into people? Yeah, because the snake is a person. It is? Yeah. Um. Well... <sighs> That's right. There was a stupid yeah. scene in one of those Fantastic Beasts movie where the yeah, it's garbage. But yeah, I mean the snake's magical. But it can't talk. It can take form. It only speaks parcel tongue or snake. Yeah, yeah. snake stuff because it's a snake. Nick Nagini. Um. Yeah, Hermione takes care of them. They get out of there. Like, but it rebounds and it kills Harry's daggone wand. It's cool. It's cool they do this, but I'm just telling you, I hate it. I hate that whole thing. Let him keep his dang wand. Well, he's, you know, it's, he's a it's the same as, as Voldemort. Voldemort. You know, it's just. Yeah. Um. So after that, <sighs> yeah, they're in the woods again, and uh, a doe Patronus pops up and leads Harry to a frozen pond. Preston. I haven't watched the last movie yet, and I'm blanking out. That's Snape's Patronus. I'm de- I'm pretty sure that Snape sent the sword of Godric Gryffindor to him. Like, he got it out of Bellatrix's vault and sent it to him. Yeah. Somehow. That Okay. That Okay, we're on the same page. Sorry to skip ahead for anyone listening if you haven't listened before or watched before. Or but since he's the, screw you. he's the headmaster of Hogwarts now, he can send that out whenever. Like magically, man. Uh, yeah, maybe I don't know. No, I think you're right. I I think we're both right. When I saw the dough, immediately was like, oh, Snape, dag gum. And then he puts it under the ice. What a dirt yeah. jerk! There's logic to that that I can't remember from the book. There's a reason. That, like, there's a full on reason. I thought that was Snape being a prick. No, no, no. I think there's actually like a. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, I don't I don't know, but so Harry dives in. Also, like, what a freaking idiot. You're wearing this cursed necklace that hates everything. You know the sword will kill it. Maybe put you that leave it on your neck, you dildo. Like, leave you took all your, your clothes off. <laughs> didn't Slip he, didn't he get on his boxers? Yeah. Yeah, take your necklace off, bro. No one wants to see your hookah shells. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, you got a hookah shells. Just yeah. Fart. So as he's in the water, the 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 locket tries to strangle him and bring him back <laughs> up. The best thing in the world. He's dying. These hands come in. They take the sword first. <laughs> then they. Then they say, and it's it's Ron. Ron grabs the sword and then saves Harry. Yeah. <laughs> like, let me get Sick. the sword first. Priority, hey, good, hey, righto. Priorities. Who cares? But mm-hmm. like, whoa. Because, uh, but they realize they they need the sword because it, the sword takes in what makes it stronger, and since it stabbed the basilisk way back in Chamber of Secrets, it's got basilisk venom in it, which means it can destroy Horcruxes. Yep. So you get that nice sequence of uh. Them fighting off the necklace itself or the locket. Excuse yeah, me. But. It just opens up and it's like this black goo that makes up Voldemort's soul, basically. I, I know that. I think it's a really good time to say this. We've watched all these movies. Uh-huh. It. How, I can't remember how many years have passed since the first one at this point. Well, the, if. 10? 10 years? No, I think it's more like if he, he's 11 when he goes in, they're like oh, 18. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Actual, actual movie. Oh. Um, the, first, the first one was about, like, what, about, 10 years before? About nine years. I think this is a great time. I, I think this series is important because you can see how much more cinematography is and visual effects mm-hmm. have come. Or how far? Because that scene is amazing. I mean, yeah, like that the whole tundra of sequence and everything. wouldn't be possible in the first movie. No, that like well, like we said in that no. episode, that would that movie was like a, a BBC original. Yeah, movie. Yeah, but I mean, like I just think this is such an important. I'm getting way too uh, thoughtful here, but like I think it's important. Like cinematography history, I think this series could be looked of. Look at the transition of the beginning, the end, Uh how much better things look, how much more you can do. Some of it hurts in the next movie. I got problems, but for now, especially, you know, spoiler alert when he's holding Dobby, when he's dead at the end and yeah, the way he's, his hand is like, doesn't clip into the, (laughs) um, (laughs) yeah, but, uh, sorry, my ramble aside. Yeah, so Ron comes back. I absolutely, like, I don't think it's offensive. I don't think it's wrong, but the, like, boyfriend that screwed up coming back, the girlfriend still likes him. Mm-hmm. It's all good. But that whole, like, cat mouse, it's great. Those actors and actresses, money. Uh, but then... um it's i mean like good job on them ron's been gone he's the only real wizard hermione and harry know real world Mm -hmm. hermione stumbles across that logo again which is the deathly hollows which ron if he saw it would say exactly what it was because child's book i don't think he knew the symbol though I don't think in the movie, I don't think in the movie he picks up on it. In the books, he's like, oh, yeah, that's this. That's this. You know, like the child story. Well, yeah. I think, I think they they went with in the movie was he knew the story, but he didn't know the symbol. Okay. Yeah. And that makes sense. So they go see uh, Mr. Lovegood. Z- I don't know. I can't say his name. Zinius, I think. Bra, bra, bra. Yeah. Elon Musk's son. They went and saw him. Uh, and he gives them the like, this is what the Deathly Hollows is. Preston, we talked about it earlier. That whole cartoon sequence. It's amazing. That's that's some of the best things. Like, oh I my think the gosh. director told the animator, like, I think this is like a real thing. He was like, show us something we've never seen before. That was the only direction he gave. It was so good. I mean, like it echoed old Disney cartoons. Mm-hmm. I, mean, it, I don't know. Kind of reminded Every me time of like, I watched, I'm motion. so impressed. It was reminded me a lot of stop motion. Yeah. Stuff. It is so good. And not only that, but the concept, the whole story, I guess JK Rowling did something good because yeah. 
Um, that whole story is so good. Just the, like the guy that wanted to own everybody. Yeah, he gets his you know his throat slit the next day. Yeah, the guy that wanted to bring the dead back to life loses his mind because he can't play with death. But the nice, calm guy that just said, "Hey, do you want to hide out when I'm ready to die? I'll give you a knock." I don't know. That whole tale's good, but you quickly find out Dumbledore has the Elder Wand. Yep. All those are real, which is great. Harry has the dang cloak. Which, if you paid attention in Order of the Phoenix, at the end with that wizard duel with Voldemort, that's the Elder Wand. They kept the same prop. Continuity. Good job. Saw that that freaking prompt. It's kind of broken. Saw it, though. And yeah, that's you, right. I paid a lot of money to see a bullcrap tourist experience. I don't know if I've told you about it, Preston, but don't do it anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, but as soon as they say Voldemort, the the Death Eaters show up because they have uh, Luna Lovegood kidnapped. Sorry, I'm trying to remember timing of something. <laughs> Yeah, you're sorry. Yeah, you're dead on. Say Voldemort. What we said before, the tracer, it hits. They're there. Loved They're that. Immediately. Almost. Loved it. You. <sighs> oh, crap. Okay, I got it. I'm sorry. Now I'm in time. Yeah, that house gets demolished. Uh, mm-hmm. They dissipate to the woods where they've gone before. And when they get there, there's a lot of Death Eaters. Fight them off. That whole sequence is effing oh, rad, man. God, I love so it. Awesome. <laughs> let that be the whole dang movie. This whole prequel bullcrap, let that like, oh man, it was so cool. Ah, I'm such a nerd. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> Hermione knocks him out to try and make his face different, and you get a vision of Voldemort going to see Grindelwald in Azkaban. Mm-hmm questioning him where the wand is and he says Dumbledore and that's where well we'll hit it here it's at the end but the snatchers drag them to the Malfoy house Gryffindor oh, sword and hands and all before that Her- uh, Hermione uh, realizing they can't get away hits Harry in the face with like a stinging charm that blows yeah, up Ugs them up Ugs them up and there, and Bellatrix drags over. Oh, again, we have to mention Helena Bonham Carter as the craziest bitch in the room. <laughs> God, like I hate, like, oh, I hate how so, good she is. Like, how, yeah, it's amazing how evil she is in this movie. Hate and, how and good she movies. is, and I hate how much you. I, maybe I'm wrong. I've said it before. This is where the compassion for Malfoy hits. Oh yeah, well, like, it, it kind of is awful. It makes you feel sorry for the entire Malfoy family in this movie because yeah, apart from being like racist Nazis, but eh, other than that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you feel more bad for the wife and the son because she kept trying to get Malfoy out of a lot of stuff in this movie. She was yeah, she sucked a lot of D. Um, oh well, <laughs> well that's getting clipped anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, that whole sequence. This. This is the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Th- this whole sequence is great, and then we'll talk about it. But like, I just feel like this is downhill. I feel like you were going up, 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 up. Awesome! That last sequence in the woods, killer. And this that is was, like, screw well, this. You know, in your story, that was your climax where they all get kidnapped, yeah. and then this is the falling action where we go to the end of the movie. Yeah. So they get thrown in jail. Mm-hmm. Hermione's getting raped. No, well, raped. No, sorry. Getting, she's getting <laughs> she's getting drilled into. Be- uh, Bellatrix is cutting mud blood into her skin. Right, drilled into. Got it. Um yeah. <laughs> Ron comes down, has the whole, hey boy, here's the light, and you uh see Luna. The other I don't remember his name. The little uh, goblin boy. Uh, so they, 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 no, 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 no. The um, bank oh. goblin boy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know his name. It's goblin. It, well, it becomes it becomes more important the next movie, but yeah. Um, 
they're all prisoners. They figure out a way out by effing up Wormtail because Wormtail's a useless boy. Mm-hmm. Um, oh God, hold on. I'm trying to. I'm trying not to skirt into the next movie so quick. But they go upstairs. They have a good fight. It's awesome. That whole fight sequence is great. Yeah. But then you get Dobie unscrewing <laughs> the daggum chandelier, which is such good, like, comedy. Dobby only meant to maim or seriously injure. Yeah. But you know what, Dobie? You're going to get into a portal with an old bootstrap knife and get yourself stabbed. But before that, Dobby has a great speech. He says, I'm a free elf. And with my freedom, I choose to save Harry Potter. Uh, and then you get a gut punch in the next scene where they they teleport to a beach. Because before they could close that little portal they went through, Belichick throws a knife. And Harry's like, oh, we're all okay. We're all okay. Let's go to this thing. And then you turn around and, and Dobby's slumped over on the beach. Harry Potter. And this little minute annoy minor annoyance to Harry Potter, he finally realizes has been the best thing in his life, kind of. The 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 one thing that person technically that has looked out for him the entire time. And he just treated him as a little annoyance. That was the moment of silence for Debbie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sucks. What a terrible way to end this. I mean, I guess it's good. <laughs> it's kind of like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. A little bit. Like none of the none of the first two movies of Lord of the Rings had really amazing endings. They just ended. Yeah. Yeah, ended. There's gonna be more, but maybe there's not. Um I do like proper burial. Yeah, I think they did a good job. Like, which Logan immediately said, "Well, where'd they get that shovel from?" No, who fucking cares? <laughs> I was like, Logan, they can make it magically appear and dig it. Like that's that's not the point of where the tool came from. Hermione's been reaching into her bag this entire movie. Who yeah, cares her where it comes from? Time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh, tell me more. Anyway, um. <laughs> What I didn't realize that's um Bill Weasley's house. Okay. I didn't either. I forgot. I, I went back and looked at the books and then said, Oh god, the internet exists. I could have looked it up. It was that's, not even mentioned uh, in the movie. Yeah, it's Bill Weasley's Seaside Cottage. Okay. And whatever Fluir, Floor, whatever her name is. Fluor de la Cure. Yeah. Um, but you get a nice it's not a post credit scene, you gotta like build up to it of Voldemort breaks open Dumbledore's mm -hmm. tomb, takes that wand, and then like old, snaps uh, his fingers and they all die. Like uh, Palpatine shoots lightning into the sky. <laughs> <sighs> well, it's so wild. Like Marvel movies didn't exist. Oh, like I gotta, they do now. I'm all, um. So yeah, Dobby's dead. Uh, Voldemort has the Elder Wand. <laughs> yeah, Wild so Dobby's dead. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is before all the Marvel crap. Like, I think this is the first, like, big series. Oh, it was a big baddie. He won. Yeah. Right? Like, he, he, the, the, yeah, Voldemort kind of wins in the end because he gets what he's looking for. Yeah, AIDS. <laughs> killed him aids killed him it's love it's extra love um it's a good movie man i give it an eight the same here just you know it's a it's a part one i mean that that does kind of hurt it a little bit but it'd be an eight four if it wasn't a part one yeah yeah so next week will be exciting uh it will. yeah I, I don't you know probably cover this later i don't know if we're doing this in person or what I, w I was assuming so. Good. F yeah. 
<laughs> That's E F F, by the way, if you want to spell it out. We'll we'll figure that out off of recording. But uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're on to um what you watching? Um, you know, man, I, I'm gonna go with PSA. Don't work too much. Enjoy life. Yep. Don't let don't let work consume your life. Because I can't do anything right now. I did get away watch this week's episode of Chainsaw Man, which I've been promoting on here slightly. Oh yeah. I want to make sure I say this correctly. Preston, this show is bat crap crazy. Bat crap crazy. This is episode eight. Normally in animes, you watch three episodes. Uh huh. You watch the first three, you know what it's going to be. I watched the first three and said, all right, this is cool. The fourth one happened. I went, what is this? The fifth one, I said, this is different. The sixth one, I said, okay, got it. The seventh one, I went, what is happening? The eighth one, it is, yeah, it is, wow, man, it's so good. It is so crazy. Okay. Like, just, just imagine, like, I'm not saying this is what happens in case you or anyone else does. No one should watch anime. It's bad for your health. But um, imagine watching Harry Potter. And in the uh, grand scheme of it, like one big whole thing, not just movies. Let's say a quarter of the way through, Hermione, Ron, Harry, Dumbledore, everyone, all the main characters, they just die. Oh, wow. Someone kills them. Someone just kills them all. And there's no pickup of what's happening. It's just, they're dead. Wow. So, I don't know. Good, good series. Just spoiled it, probably. But, um, uh, you know, apart from that, not much, ma'am. Don't, don't pay for the Harry Potter experience in Atlanta. It's fun. But, yeah, go to Universal yes. Studios and just go to yeah. Diagon Alley there. Yeah. You ever have you done that? I have not. I want to go one day. Yeah, I really do. I want to make that happen. I have I finished the peripheral on Amazon. Is uh-huh. it good? Yeah. Okay. The ending That's pretty was much what I've heard. It's very confusing at parts. Um, I think but I think it's intentional. Like they don't fully explain how their time travel works, but I think that's intentional. Um, and I've started 1899 on Netflix. What do you think? Because I really want to start it. Um, Did you watch Dark? No. Okay, so you're... I just saw a lot of people talking about 1899, and I was like, I gotta check this out. I'm gonna go tell Um, you right now, you gotta watch Dark. Okay. It's the previous... Yeah, but I'm gonna want. I'm. I think I might start that next week. I was actually. It's funny. You, I mean, I don't. We didn't plan this, but I was about to say next week. I want to tell you I've watched 1899 because I'm so pumped. It's 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 gonna be brain hurting. Have you watched 1899? I've watched all of Dark, and I can oh. go ahead and tell you this is how I think about this. When I watch that show, I do this. <laughs> Well, the second episode, I watched the second episode the other day of 1899, and that's how it, like, it, it zooms out from what is going on. It's like, what? <laughs> okay, like, here's what I'm going to tell you from down. the three seasons of Dark. <laughs> second episode, just wait till next season. <laughs> just wait. Okay. Yeah. But seriously, hey, when you need something to watch, Watch Dark. I'm going to go ahead and tell you it's a time travel-ish type thing. It's kind of like Stranger Things, but it's time travel. (sighs) What turns... Anyone I've recommended it to, they quit watching. It's not like... um, I don't remember the word here. You know, when like a family screws themselves. Like on the you know, like... Game of Thrones, yeah. There's a lot of weird time displacement and love interest okay. that happened. Okay. But Dark is probably one of the top five best shows I've ever watched. All right. Yeah. It when it when it ends, you poop your pants. Good to know. Which yeah, which you know, what you're watching now, and I'm gonna try and start. 
probably going to be about the same. All right, so that's it for this week. Uh, next week is, of course, the very end. Deathly Hallows Part 2. <laughs> and that's it for the year. Oh, that's depressing. Yeah. I'm going to take like a couple weeks break, I think. Before we jump into the new year. Hey, everyone. The new podcast coming up on this channel is Jake's Thoughts and Wisdom for two weeks. If you want to hear some <laughs> asinine insanity, come on down. That'd be goodbye, all your listeners. Uh, so <laughs> if you want to suggest a movie that we should do at some point or a TV show, really, uh, you can send yeah. that to secondtakemoviespot at gmail.com. We are on Instagram at secondtakemovies. Uh, and for Jake, I will say we'll see you next week, probably in person. Heck yeah. We will be in person, not nobody else. Yeah, we're going to be pooping our pants in real life, guys. That's right. <laughs> so Zip we'll see you next week. Load them up. 